seen. Huh? Yet, if thou warn the wicked, now he warn you, see, and he turn not from his wickedness, or from his wicked way, he shall die in his iniquity. But thou hast delivered thy soul. So it's our job to do Israel. That's who we are, see? We are Israel. We are the children of Israel, the house of Israel. 
Mount Zion, we are God's chosen people. That's right. We live in the kingdom of free royalty. Now, when you're walking around doing this, you're showing that you're not royal. When I was doing that, I didn't know. So I wasn't walking in a royal place. And I was seeing people that were older than me in movies that I hung around with doing the same. And I thought it relaxed my mind. I used to say that same thing. So I know what to say there, where that's coming from. You know what I'm saying? But I knew at that time nothing. I thought I did, but I knew nothing. And here I am today looking back and I see you walking in the same steps that I walked in. And I realized the same shit still going on. Still being pushed on our feet. Ain't no change in it. So that lets me know what the Bible is teaching us. The book of Genesis, chapter 32, and verse 28. You know? And he said, Thy name shall be called no more Jacob. No more Jacob. But Israel. But who? But Israel. Israel. Our name is Israel. House of Israel. Nation of Israel. We are 12 tribes. We have been scattered worldwide. This is why I just don't see it. 12 tribes. One nation. Bible, you read and you realize that the Bible is speaking to one nation of people, us, so called blacks, Hispanics, and Native Americans. It's Israelites. You ain't talking to everybody, even though anybody can pick this book up and read it. It's only talking to us. And you know what the Lord be saying to us constantly? Keep my commandments. Keep my commandments. Damn it. Come home and keep my commandments. Huh? What, what haven't I done for you? to keep going out there being rebellious again. Come back to me. I made you. I wake you up every day. I make sure that you do it. Why won't you do the things that I do or want you to do? Now you want to consistently do what the world tells you to do. I didn't choose them. I told you. See that? We didn't choose the white man. We didn't choose the Indian man. We didn't choose the uh, Chinese the Arab. We didn't choose them. Shows us. Come to keep my commandments. I'll take care of you. You're being ruled to. Ruling over your other nation or the other nation. But if you don't, let's see what he says. Deuteronomy 28 15. Deuteronomy 28 15. The book of Deuteronomy, chapter 28, and verse 15. You know, Isaiah 1 and 3. Huh. And he says, But it shall come to pass. If thou wilt not hearken unto the voice of the Lord thy God to observe to do all his commandments, and do his commandments, if you don't, and his statutes, which I command thee this day, mm -hmm. that all these curses, all these what, all, all these, these curses, curses, all these curses, shall come upon thee and overtake thee. So we got curses on us right now. If we don't keep his commandments. You don't even know what the commandments are. They'll say it's only ten. You got a book in how many? It's six. Ten commandments? Come on. You ain't keeping the commandments that he got. He ain't being taught his commandments. So we're getting our ass kicked out here. So to speak. Excuse my language. But because we don't know who we are, we don't know what the hell we're supposed to be doing. We out here getting thrashed, smashed, getting our ass kicked by the Lord and by these other nations. He said, because you don't want to keep my commandments and do them, all these curses shall come upon you. They'll overtake you. Good. Now that's a curse when you're sitting around smoking your life away. Because you didn't know and the people above you didn't tell you. Nobody said nothing to you. They just said, hey man, do what you do, man. You only got one life, yo, no.
tell you where we come from. Give me, give me one. Okay, let's bring it out for me. Uh, the book of Galatians, chapter 4, and verse 26. Uh huh. But Jerusalem. But what? But Jerusalem. But Jerusalem. Which is above is free. Uh huh. Which is the mother of us all. Which is what? The mother, mother of, of us, us all. all. That's the motherland right there. They tell us it's Africa. No, the motherland, Jerusalem. Yeah, so where do we come from? All oh, praise. Who are we as a nation of people? Who are we as a nation? Who are we? Okay. Where's our homeland? That's right, too. You see that? You took five minutes of your time, ten minutes of your time to put that down to come over to be built up. Put that down to be built up. Now, your brothers that actually give a damn about it. You see that? Now, if you ain't learned nothing else today, you learn it your way. Israelite. Say it with me, man. Israelite. Say it, King. All oh, praise. Where is the homeland? The roof. Now your history is going to be signed all throughout the country. You know what I'm saying? I know you got things to do today, but you had to give me this information. Don't destroy yourself. I care about your life. I care about you. Because when you do the things that you do, realize it's not just about you. Your actions dictate and reflect on everybody around you. You know what I'm saying? This. You know what I'm saying? When we break the commandments, it affects everybody around us. Breaking God's commandments is what we call, or what the Bible calls, sin. Breaking his commandments. Yeah. Book of Jeremiah, chapter 31, and verse 1 through 4, it says, At the same time, said the Lord, will I be the God of all the families of Israel, and they shall be my people. They shall what? They shall be my people. Thus said the Lord, the people which were left of the sword found grace in the wilderness, even Israel, when I went up to cause them to rest. That was us. We the same people that was walking with Moses. Verse 3. The Lord have appeared of all unto me, saying, Now, I have loved thee with an everlasting love. I have loved thee with an everlasting, everlasting love. love. Meaning the Lord always going to love his people. Now, the question is, are we going to always love him? How do we love the Lord? How do we love him? Praise him. That's good. Bring out what love is. He says, again, the Lord have appeared of old unto me, saying, Yeah, I have loved thee with an everlasting love. Therefore, with loving kindness have I drawn thee. Again, I will build thee. He will what? I will build thee. He will build thee. The same way he built us up. And thou shalt be built, O virgin of Israel. O virgin of Israel. Bring it out. Show you what the love is. That everlasting love the Lord is talking about. Bring it up. Alright? The book of 1 John, chapter 5 and verse 3. Uh -huh. For this is the love of God. That we keep his commandments, and his commandments are not grievous. It was like when you were coming up. How did you show your mom that you loved her? Told her. He listened. He listened.
you're going to do whatever she asks you to do within a reason. Because you love her and you respect her. She took care of you. She raised you. She gave birth to you. How could you not? That's the same mindset. It's not more than we need to have for the father. He allowed you to come and read that body. He woke you up every day of your life. He made sure you were pregnant. Made it home safe, even though you was out there doing what you thought was right. So when he asked you to do something, you should be willing to do it without question because you know that he loves you and he's telling you these things for your betterment. For your longevity of life, he wants you to live. He wants you to be prosperous. He wants you to lead a family. He wants you to stand up and be a good example to your brother. Make sense to you. That's what the Bible talks about. To us. And it's our job to come back to the Jews and raise them back up to where they're supposed to. Give them reason to live life. To not just watch the TV, but to see the wickedness that's right in front of you. You have to be able to see how your enemy is plotting against you. Do what they project to you through the TV, through your phone, through the music, through the food, through the education. Your enemy is working ten times harder than you are to destroy you. You don't even know you got enemies. You don't know you got enemies too. And it ain't just the people that look like you that want to cause you bottom line. You actually got enemies. Oh, 
about to look like him. The only way you was going with that. They was destroyed. They put that cream, that perm in her head and relaxed her. That's what they call it, a relaxer. It not only relaxed her hair, but it relaxed her spirit. It calmed her down and pacified her. It destroyed her. Then she didn't give a damn about what, what else was going on. She just continued on. You watch that movie, check out the things that they do doing. They used the shirt. They had the lab right up under the shirt. You know what I'm saying? And they have in the past for the misleading people. Telling them lies. Hopping and skipping. Entertain rather than edify. Yeah. Gotta pay attention to what they put right in front of you. Bring it up. The book of Psalm, chapter 59, and verse 1. Go back to that. Deliver me. From my enemies. Say what? Deliver me from my enemies. That's King David right there. Our forefather, mighty brother. He was nice. Say what? Deliver me from my enemies, O oh my God. Mm -hmm. Defend me from them that rise up against me. Defend us. The Lord fights for us when we do what he tells us to do. Just like your mom, if you're doing what she told you to do when somebody tried to come to you, guess what? She's flying out that door. Damn flip flops and curl iron all in her hair and the bonnet on everything. She coming out there ready to play. See that? It says, Deliver me from the workers of iniquity. From the workers of iniquity. Those who put those thoughts in your mind to have you going off and breaking the most high command. It says, Deliver me from those who want to play me the wicked. Who love sin, who love iniquity. In fact, they love it so much they, they can't live without it. Morning. He says, deliver me from the workers of iniquity and save me from bloody men. And save me. He ain't crying out to another man. He ain't crying out to that. He ain't crying out to the TV. He's crying out to the most high that he helped in his time of trouble and distress. Three. Huh. Verse 3. For lo, they lie in wait for my soul. So they right. They lie, lie in, in wait, wait for, for my soul. soul. It's like police be hiding behind corners, yeah. hiding behind billboards, now, waiting for you to come around the corner and see you so they can get you. Fight you, fight you, fight you. The enemy is always waiting on you, whether they putting themselves out to be seen or not. The enemy always watching. He listening to you on the phone. I know you done had conversations. I just had a, a crazy situation the other day. Me and my real, we was talking about the scripture. And I was trying to tell her how this precept or this story go right along with a story in general. I said, man, this is about Abraham and his wife when he said he was a Christian. I'm going to look that up right quick. I didn't remember the precept off the top of my head. So I typed in the letter A-B. The whole sentence came out that I was just talking to her about. I just typed in this letter. A-B. It said, Abraham told his wife to say that she was his sister. So that he wouldn't be killed. I had the whole verse right there. I put two letters in there. Meaning what? My enemy was merciful. Listening to what I got to say. Same way they listen when you uh, playing your video game. When you watch TV. YouTube. Social media. They got all that watching. They call it algorithm. But they actually watch it. More. It says, for low. Uh, they lay in wait. They lie in wait for my soul. The mighty are gathered against me, not for my transgression, nor for my sin, O oh Lord. So because of our sin, we got our enemies hunting our footsteps. They tracking everything that we do. Bring it up right here. Finish it up. Psalm chapter 8, 3, verse 3. Uh -huh. They have taken crafty counsel against thy people uh -huh. and consulted against thy hidden ones. Uh -huh. Verse 4. They have said, Come and let us cut them off from being a nation. Come and let us cut them off from being a nation. That's why we don't know who we are. It's no coincidence. They said, Hey, you know what? A good way to continue them is to change our names as well.
They have said, I mean, they have taken crafty counsel against thy people and consulted against thy hidden ones. They have said, come and let us cut them off from being a nation that the name of Israel may be no more in remembrance. So these individuals, these other nations are working at an all time high to keep us cut off from being a nation. They don't want us to know who we are. They don't want us to know what we're supposed to be doing. Why? Because they know when we in sin, Most High is not fighting for us. There's no protection. It's like going back to family life. Growing up, if you did not do the things that your mom told you, and you were a constant judge and child, you think you're running your rest and you're in trouble, you don't want to miss the thing you got to do. Constantly. You think you're going to run your age? Thy firstborn, uh -huh. 
thy only begotten, and thy fervent lover Reach. are given into their hands. Uh, are given into their hands. The Lord gave us into their hands, and we didn't want to be obedient. And if the world now be made for our sake, that's the second time he told us. And if the world be made for our sake, Reach. why do we not possess an inheritance with the world? Why we ain't got nothing in it. Why are we in a merge with our homeland for me? Why somebody else in our land? Why we ain't got no land to call our own? If it was created for us. Why we ain't got no land? Really? How long shall this endure? How long will this endure? See that? So the Lord let me know we got enemies. He gave us into the hand of the enemy. And we didn't keep his commandments. Because we didn't keep his commandments, we have been cursed. That's why every time you turn on the news, you see your brothers and sisters getting gunned down. When you go and hear anything about jails or prison, we the number one. Still in the jail for it, prison for it. Huh? It ain't no coincidence, think it ain't no coincidence. It ain't by the luck of draw. Draw the straw, it ain't none of this. It's because we do not keep now you got a little more information about who you are and what your purpose is. Let's get where this purpose is. Deuteronomy, I mean, Ecclesiastes uh, 12 and 13. Tell you what your purpose is. But it ain't for be walking around lost in the world, lost in the cross of the world. You know what I'm saying? You got a purpose, man. Huh? And it ain't just to have fun or just to make money. You got to go out and help gather your people and save them. Are we the only people that need Savior? Yeah, yeah. Nation of Israel, we need Savior. Everybody else living it up. Everybody else got their kids. Everybody else still got their dad in their life. See this? Everybody else got inheritance to be passed down. We ain't got this. You know what I'm saying? Bring it up. Look at Ecclesiastes chapter 12 and verse 13. Uh -huh. Let us hear the conclusion of the whole matter. Fear God uh -huh. and keep his commandments. Fear but, God and keep his commandments. Why? For this is the whole duty of man. That's our whole purpose. That's the whole conclusion as to why he put us on this earth. To keep his commandments. Now we can do big and great things as long as we keep his commandments. We here in this land trying to make it, trying to survive, trying to keep our heads above water. Don't even know where we're supposed to be. Wondering why if we go work 80 hours a week when you can't even really do that, you still stay broke. You still stay struggling in this thing. You can't get ahead. You know what I'm saying? We're the commandment out. Because we don't keep the commandment. We don't know and we can't keep it. So our job is to wake you up and tell you what the commandments are. They're not hard to keep it, as we read earlier. But if we truly love ourselves, if we love the Lord, if we love our people, we'll keep that's what Noah did. Bring it up. The book of Leviticus, chapter 19, and verse 17. Bring it up. Thou shalt not hate thy brother in thy heart. Thou shalt in any wise rebuke thy neighbor and not suffer sin upon him. Verse 18. That's it. So the Lord is saying we should not hate our brother. Now, we slain earlier what love was, right? What was love?
Now it says he didn't want me to be uh, And not and it says uh love thy brother or don't hate your brother. Rebuke him. Being correct. Just like you didn't know about smoking the following is simple. So it's my job to rebuke you, basically correct you and show you, hey bro, you going off. And I'm telling you these things because I love you. Showing you where you're going off. I didn't hate you. I didn't let you just walk. Right. Because I see that, that is, that's a dead end road. So a brother that has you tell for you. Come get the word, sis. Don't run, bro. Don't run. Get the word for you. Get that tomorrow. That's a lady. I mean, you are the man. You are the head. No, you no. <laughs> this is what you got to be built up in the school. You as a man are supposed to be the one leading. You are the head. You are the strongest vessel. You're supposed to be leading. You got to stand in that road. Part of, uh, part of you being built up. If somebody else calling. You ain't supposed to. Eh, no. You think somebody? Hey, let me ask you this. Let me ask you this. Somebody do that to you. They respect you. I'm not trying to put nothing in, no divide or none of that, but think about what you're doing and what's going on around you. They don't value what you stand for or what you're trying to do. The person don't respect you. These are the things we got to consider as men. Okay? All right, man. Hey, can I? Who are we? Who are we? That's our homeland. Yeah. Yeah, Israelites, yeah. Israelites, man. You gotta stand up as men <laughs> by keeping these commandments. Build yourself up. Stand on ten toes. Stand for what you believe in. Don't let nobody pull you this way or that way. Stand on what it is that you know and believe to be true. Anything other than that is wicked. I'm saying. Mm -hmm.